Hi, I'm Sherry White from Fountain of Life Ministries International, and I, I thank you for tuning in uh, to this program today. Uh, this message is going to be on marriage and marriage relationships, and I, I just pray that the Lord will open up your hearts and your ears that you might hear from the Spirit of God today what He would have to say to you. You know, marriages, uh, many of them, uh, even, you know, in the body of Christ and, and out of the body of Christ uh, in the world today uh, are in jeopardy. And there is, it is a critical time uh, for marriages to uh, be what God wants them to be. And that he wants to be the center of, of your marriage. And that's really the only way that, that there is a guarantee, uh, there is an assurity there, there is a surety there that it will be successful. And so I would like to just start by just praying uh, before we open up the scripture uh, this day. And so let's pray together right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you as your vessel and I just ask that, that you bring forth the scriptures that you want to, to bring forth, that you will speak uh, to the people today that are watching and we just give you all the praise and honor and glory uh, for binding together, repairing and restoring uh, marriages uh, this day uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I would like to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But the Lord began to give me uh, five different uh, T's uh, that are words that help build a successful marriage. And, and as the Spirit of the Lord began to minister to me and show me the scriptures, uh, I believe that as, as this comes forth today, uh, that you will take hold of the Word of God that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance and that your marriage will begin to prosper uh, because of the Word of God. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, we call this the love chapter. I'd like to begin with uh, verse 4. And you know, in the King James it says love or charity, which means love. And so I'm going to use the word love here. Love suffereth long. Now, that does not have anything to do with abuse or torment. And I just want you to know that from the start. That that word suffereth, it means to allow love to work in your marriage. Allow God, who is love, God is love, to begin to work and bring forth His perfect will into your marriage. So when it says love suffereth, that word suffereth in the Greek means to allow. Allow God to come in to your marriage this day and begin to work on you and begin to work on your mate and, and bring that unity and harmony into your marriage. Can you say amen? Love suffereth long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not exalt itself. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave itself unseemingly. And love does not seek her own. Love is not easily provoked. And it thinks no evil. Ooh, I like that one right there. Doesn't mean that we won't see some evil going on somewhere. But it says that we don't think any evil. Love rejoices not in sin or iniquity. But love rejoices in the truth. Hallelujah. And so today we want to hear the truth of the matter. We want to take hold of that truth and the truths that are in these five T's and bring them to our home and bring them to our marriage and begin to do the word of God. Hallelujah. And this says love bears all things. I'm in verse 7. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. 
and love endures all things. Verse 8, love never fails. You know, when you are acting in love and you're speaking the truth in love, then love never fails. That's what it says right here. Love, God, never fails. And so when God is working in your marriage, hallelujah, then it's not going to fail. Praise the name of Jesus. There is a person that just heard that, and all of a sudden it went off in you. Uh, the enemy's been trying to tell you that your marriage is going down the tubes, and you can't do anything about it. But that is a lie from the pit of hell, because when God is working in your marriage, it will never fail. Hallelujah. I want you to hear that today. You know, my husband and I have been married going, uh, this is the 47th year that we've been married. And, and I just want to say that God being in the center of the marriage uh, has kept us together. Uh, not to say that there hasn't been some struggles or some mistakes or some things said uh, in those 47 years. But let me tell you something. Love never fails. God working in our marriage means that it's not going to fail. Hallelujah. And I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for a wonderful husband. I thank the Lord for our marriage and our relationship that we have. And so as we start these five T's, I wanted to start here saying that God wants to be in the midst of your marriage. You know, the first, the first T, let's go to Proverbs chapter uh, 31. And some of you know this, this passage as uh, the Proverbs 31 uh, woman, the virtuous woman. But let's go to verse 11 of 31. Well, in verse 10, it says, Who can find a virtuous woman? Question mark, for her price is far above rubies. And I believe that if you have Jesus in your heart and that the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you and giving you power and strength, then you can say, well, stop right here because I am a virtuous woman. I am filled with the love of God. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 11, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall not have any need to, to go looking for spoil. Now that's very important. Trust is the first T. And it is extremely important to have this in your marriage where each mate trusts the other. Uh, we trust each other to bear our heart to each other, to say what's on our heart. Uh, if there's something that's troubling us, we feel secure that we can say that to our mate and it's not going to go any further and that our mate is going to pray with us and our mate is going to cover us uh, with the word of God. Hallelujah. And so trust is extremely important. Our, our first trust is in the Lord. My trust is in the Lord. My husband's trust is in the Lord. And so that... That trust is extremely important that we trust the Lord to do what he says he's going to do in his word. Hallelujah. And we can trust him to do that. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Hallelujah. And so here it says that the, the, the trust uh, is, is in the virtuous woman. And the trust needs to be uh, in the husband as well. And uh, we're going to go to some other scriptures that, that will just bring out that point about trusting. You know, it also says uh, the second T is truth. We need to be truthful with one another. We need to be honest with one another. And if you would uh, turn with me to John chapter 8. Verse 32, truth. Let truth prevail in, in every situation that comes into your marriage. Let's be honest. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, bear 
uh, our hearts uh, to one another. Uh, John 8, 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. You know, and so the first T was trust, and the second T is truth. Being truthful, hearing the truth, speaking the truth in love. The third T is tenderness. And let's go to Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verse 32. Our children and my husband and I, we sing this verse We when they were growing up and, and we would sing the scriptures. Uh, but this is one that we sign quite often. It's in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be ye kind one to another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Tenderness, being tender-hearted to one another, husband to wife and wife to husband. Be ye kind one to another. But this T is tenderness. Forgiving one another. You know, and this is important because there are times when words come out and, and actions uh, come out and, and things are done that are not according to the Word of God. But praise God because He forgives us when we say, Father, you know, I've made a mistake. And when we go to our, our husband, our uh, wife, or, and to each other, and we say, you know, please forgive me. I've made a mistake. I, I did this, and, and, and just be forgiving. That's part of being tender toward one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Hallelujah. So the first T was trust. And the second T is true, being honest with one another. The third T is tenderness. Be kind one to another, forgiving one another. The fourth T is to communicate, to talk. The T word is talk. Talk about things. Sit down and talk about things. Or go out and walk uh, in the park, or uh, but begin to communicate one to the other. You know, uh, in Hebrews, let's turn over to Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verse 16. I like this scripture. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16. You know, I'm going to start in verse uh, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer up the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. Uh, that's a good way of starting a conversation. Hallelujah. By just saying, let's pray together. Let's praise God together. And then in verse 16, it says, but to do good and to communicate Forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Hallelujah. Let's, let's communicate. Let's, it says it's doing good if we talk with one another. You know, sometimes one, one uh, uh, the, either the wife or the husband, uh, they puff up and they go into the other room or they go outside or they leave in the car and, and there's no talking going on. There's no communication going on. And this, this hurts a marriage. This causes a marriage to, uh, to falter and to, uh, to be uh, confused. And so we want everything out, brought out on the table and, and talked about. Uh, and we do this in a way that we're not accusing one another. See, we're to be kind one to another. Remember, tender-hearted. That was the that was the uh, third T to be tender toward uh, one another. And so, as we're talking.
talking, let's be tender to one another. Not accusing. If you have something to say, then use the word, this is how I feel. This is how I saw the situation. This is the reason that I said what I did. And begin to uh, just pour out your heart uh, one to another uh, with, with talking this over. Hallelujah. That's very important. When the conversation stops, then that is where the marriage is held up. There's hindrances there. The enemy can come in to steal, kill, and destroy your marriage on this very T right here. Not talking about it. Not communicating. See, we're not to give any place to the devil. And so the first T is that we're trusting. The second T is that we're speaking in truth. Uh, we're knowing the truth. Uh, and the third T is that we're tender toward one another. And then this fourth T is that we're communicating. We're talking about it. That keeps the devil out of your marriage. Can you say amen? The fifth T is time. How much time are you spending with your, with your mate, with your spouse? You come in or, and you do this and you do that. And, and I've seen this many times. The husband is going one direction and the wife is going another direction. And, and they're, not, they're not coming together. They're not spending time together. And that is so very important to spend quality time with your spouse. You know, uh, Ephesians 5, 16. Let's turn over there right quickly here. Ephesians 5, 16. It says, redeeming the time. How many of you know that even though you haven't been spending time with your spouse, you can redeem that time that was given to something else. You can bring it back and you can focus it on your spouse. Hallelujah. That's good news. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. And, and that, is, that is so very true right there. Hallelujah. Redeeming the time for the days are evil. So I encourage you this day to just begin to bring trust into your relationship, bring truth into your relationship, bring tenderness into your relationship, bring talking and communicating into your relationship, and spend time with one another. Hallelujah. Now, I want to, to bring this to some kind of conclusion. There's many other things that we could say about marriages, but I want to just focus on a couple in the Old Testament in the book of Ruth, Ruth and Boaz. And I just want to pick up some, uh, some golden nuggets here uh, in, this, in this passage, and then I'm going to pray, and I'm going to pray for your marriages. I'm going to pray for restoration. I'm going to pray for these five T's uh, to become active in your relationship. Hallelujah. In chapter 3 of, uh, of the book of Ruth, uh, Ruth is sent into the fields uh, to, to gather uh, in the harvest. And in, it says here, in verse 4 of chapter 3, um, well, let's, let's, let's go back. Let, let, there's so many nuggets right here in this one chapter. Let's go back to uh, verse 2. And now is not Boaz of our kindred, now this is Naomi speaking, with whose maidens I was. Behold, he, he goes into the barn uh, to Winnie, and he's going to spend the night on the threshing floor. There's many things I could say about that right there. Of course, this is a picture of the Lord, but it is also a picture of a husband. Hallelujah. And it says, uh, verse uh, 3, Wash yourself, 
How many of you know that we wash ourselves with the Word of God by studying the Word, by speaking the Word over each other? We are washing ourselves. Wash yourself and anoint thee and put on thy raiment and get thee down to the threshing floor. But make thyself known, uh, not known unto this man and he, until he has eaten and drunk. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go there and uncover his feet and lay down there. And he will tell thee what thou shalt do. Now, in this passage right here, we see a humbleness. You know, and that's not one of the T's, but I believe that that is so critical in relationship building that we are humble before one another. You know, in Ephesians chapter 5, before you start, husbands do this and wives do this, it says, submit yourself one to another. Hallelujah. You know, and of course, the main one that we submit ourselves to is the Lord. It says he here, uh, and she said unto her, all that thou sayest I will do. And so she went down, this is Ruth, she went down to the floor and did according to all that Naomi had told her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came quietly and uncovered his feet and she laid down at his feet. Now I'm not saying that, that this is something that you literally do. Uh, in the natural realm. But what I'm saying, I want you to see in the spiritual realm that Ruth was honoring Boaz. You know, and in the wedding vows, in the traditional wedding vows, it says that the wife is to reverence or honor her husband. And in and for the uh, for the husband, it says, husbands, you know, love your wives, cherish your wives, cover your wives. And look, let's look, let's go on here. And verse 8, And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, a woman layeth at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over your handmaid, for I am your nearest kinsman. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord my daughter, for thou hast shown kindness in the latter end than at the beginning. Inasmuch as thou followest not young men, but you want who I am. Thank you, Jesus. And in verse 11, he says, you are a virtuous woman. You are full of power. Did you know that humility is the way to greatness? Hallelujah. Submitting yourself one to another. Uh, husbands, submit yourself to your wife, and wives, submit yourselves to your husband, and trust. Speak the truth. Be tender with one another. Talk to one another. Spend time with one another. You know, these are five little T's that will help your marriage progress and be better than you ever thought that it could be that it will be a golden marriage. You say, well, right now my marriage is in a mess. Well, right now I speak in Jesus' name that your marriage be restored and that that passion and that uh, a desire for one another will increase uh, in the name of Jesus. If you believe this, God will come and begin to restore your marriage to what he wants it to be. Not what you think it ought to be, but what he wants it to be. He desires for marriages to be successful. I speak in the name of Jesus that there be truth and trust and tenderness and talking with one another and time spent with one another, that it will come into your marriage right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over 
your marriages. I speak blessings to come over your marriages, and I speak that those curses are gone in Jesus' name, that the lies are gone in Jesus' name, that the confusion is gone in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching this program.